All right, welcome back. We can continue here on the nightly sports call. Bordis and Bordis Hotline. It's 412 575 2600. This is your opportunity to sound off on anything you'd like to, whether it's Pitt, Penn State, West Virginia, the Pirates who lost again today. Or we could talk Penguins hockey as they get ready for their first preseason game coming up Tuesday at State College. That one at the Pagula Center. Uh, lots to get into, so let's waste no time and get right back to it. We got Eddie in East Liberty first up tonight. Hey, Eddie, how you doing? Yeah, Mr. Pompiani. Hey, I just want to know who picks up most of the tab on Penn State's head coaching position. Is it taxpayers or is it... Uh, Basically, Penn State no, I, I think it's a mix of a lot of different things, but I think it comes from, uh, you know, their budget, which, you know, they go out and they raise a lot of money, like a lot of schools do, and they have contributors and donors, and I'm not sure. You never really see where those contracts are. You never really get them, uh, you know, to see the nuts and bolts of it. So I don't have a good answer for you, other than I think it comes that, from a lot of that, different sources. That's so that being that's like mafia stuff there. Yeah. Another thing is when Stillwater, Oklahoma, to pull a better team off than we got around here with Ohio, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and New York. There's a problem when Stillwater. Well, you know, those, the one thing I'll say about that, Eddie. Thanks for the call. Is that those places are football only? It is college football only. It is big business. It's the only business from a sporting point of view in most cases. Uh, so therefore. Uh, you're going to go out if you have a good coach, which they do, and if you have recruiting opportunities, and those are the biggest games those kids are going to play, and they go there. The atmosphere is fantastic, you know. And like I, today, I mean, Pitt fans were falling asleep in the stands, uh, and national television put them on. It's you talk about things you don't want them to see for a recruiting situation. It's that, uh, but that's what was going on today. And there were some recruits at the game, so they sell atmosphere, they sell winning, they sell the only game in town, and I think it helps those universities. All right, let's go out to line four. Ken in Clearfield. What's up, Ken? How you doing? Uh, yeah, Bob, hi. hi. I'd like to know how in the world Penn State can, re can play three Ducks every year in a row and then play their Big Ten schedule, and half of them are Ducks. I, I understand it. Notre Dame plays every top team in the country. Well, there, but what do you think about that? I understand that, but it's a different situation and a different scenario. You do have nine conference games now, and you have to do what you got to do. And all these teams that are up there like to schedule lesser opponents so that they can get their mojo going early in seasons. That happens quite a bit. Uh, and it, it, it's, it's not the exception. It is the rule, uh, which is why teams like Georgia State will take a big payday. Teams... Uh, can get that kind of payday and go and you know it's a good experience for those kids I suppose like for example tonight they're playing in State College in front of over a hundred thousand people for them that's maybe once in a lifetime and so that's why the school will take the payout and take being a sacrificial lamb which is what the case most of them are. Uh, Adam in Brentwood is joining us right now on the sports call. Hey Adam how you doing? Hi I read, I read the other day that the NFL is concerned about too many empty stadiums I just want to get your take on that. Uh, I think it's more a case of ratings coming down. You know, it is the big game in town. There's no doubt. They don't even have a rival. Uh, even on its worst television day, it will ra run laps around every other sport for the most part. So um, they have the market cornered on how they are going to make their money, and it is, you know, a sacred Sunday. It's all NFL when it comes to Sunday. I happen to think college football has been more exciting, generally speaking, so far. But there are a lot of reasons why. You know, maybe those ratings are going down. Um, so you can have polar oppor opposite effects of the Colin Kaepernick situation, those in favor of him, those against him. Whatever the case may be, there are reasons for it to happen. I also think there are so many things out there right now which divert people's attention uh, versus the way it was maybe 10 years ago with all the social media, with all the opportunities to do things and um, different channels. Uh, a lot of people move around, click a lot. So... Uh, they're still the number one team in town, or number one game in town, I should say. Let's go to Tom in Franklin Park. Tom, you're on the sports call. Go right ahead. Hi, Bob. Uh, regarding the Steeler game tomorrow, uh, I've you know thought about it during the course of the week, but now that it's here, I, I'm going to be kind of disappointed if the Steelers don't really uh, play extremely well against the Vikings and win by two touchdowns. I think well, uh, this is a evolution of the Steelers over the course of the past four years and I, I think we do have a good defense so it's going to be disappointing to me if they come out flat tomorrow. I just want to see them win you know they're pretty good last year they were eight and one at home and they did their best work at home offensively and Ben Roethlisberger 
nobody had better numbers in terms of what he was doing versus his numbers on the road. 20 touchdowns, I believe, at home, five interceptions, had a huge uh, percentage, completion percentage. Uh, so I expect a lot of that to continue. I do know that Mike Zimmer, their head coach, uh, is very familiar with the Pittsburgh Steelers as being the defensive coordinator for Marvin Lewis for all those years. In fact, over 12 games in which he was the D.C. against the Steelers, guess what? They averaged just 13 points a game, the Steelers offense, with Mike Zimmer in control. So I think Mike Tomlin knows that's the kind of schematics he's looking at. He knows Zimmer well. It goes both ways there. But I, I expect the Steelers to win, and I think it'll be a good offensive game. Uh, I also think if Bradford plays, he's, he's pretty good. And uh, we saw that on Monday night, but he's got that knee injury as well. Line three we go, Jeff and Jeanette. What's up, Jeff? Hey, Bob. Thanks for taking the call. Uh -huh. I just wanted to say my uh, concern with Pitt is besides the Ruggio Lopes on a consistent basis, it seems like nobody's getting open in that receiving court. Uh -huh. I mean, Jeff Weah has like six catches, I think, in like three games. I well, mean, he dropped a on? big one last week, and he also he was open today, a wide open, and Max Brown overthrew him, and that would have been mm -hmm. an instant seven points. So they're just not connecting, which is why they went to Danushi. Yeah, absolutely. But I still believe in this team. I think they have a chance to do well in the ACC Coastal, but they need to find some answers in, in that passing game and in some other areas. But they're yeah. still young. But you know, the thing about it, their conference starts this week. So the way they have to approach it is say, look, here we are after what, we, what we've learned is we have a lot of work to do, but we start a new season. That's our conference season. Uh, and, and you're right, in the Coastal, they don't have to deal with Louisville and Florida State and Clemson on a year-to-year -year basis. So therefore... Uh, they have an easier opportunity, I think. But still, Georgia Tech's a good team. They have some good teams there. And if they don't execute better, they're going to be in trouble, regardless of who they play and when they play. We're due for a break. We have Jack, Brad, Jason, and Bill all coming up next right here live on Pittsburgh CW.